Let us pray. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto you, my rock, my refuge, my risen Lord and Savior, my King. Amen. Amen. Grace and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Better watch out, you better not cry. You better not pout, I'm telling you why. Stand up, boss is coming. Remember that song? Bring back memories. Yeah? I was always anxious with the Macy's, Macy's Day Parade. Because I know who's going to be at the end of the parade. And I know that when you saw Santa Claus, you know. It was time to prepare Christmas. And we had a train guard and we'd bring it down, you know. Brings back memories. People get all excited. Then be online to see Sandy Claus. Last couple of days we saw um, the Christmas story, and then it's a wonderful life. There's all those traditions that we see. People were focused on Christmas already. And then waiting for Santa Claus to come. And then we read the gospel for today. How many people are waiting for Jesus Christ to come again? Our heads to be seem to be downward because we just think about earthly things, but it should also be upward. Think about heaven. That's going to be our permanent zip code up there. But that's how people are. That's part of our human nature. We forget about Jesus coming more. You know, I've been waiting, Lord. I don't see you. What's up? But you see, it's the difference between his time and our time. And it's the difference between what's now and not yet. What has happened, what is, what is yet to be, and that's that tension that we have. We call it eschatology, that big word. It's waiting for the end times, for, for Jesus to come again. He came as a baby, just like you and I. He lived on this earth. <clears throat> he died for you and me on the cross just because he cares about us. He loves his creation despite our brokenness. And he was the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. The act of saving that we see. He won for us our salvation. What a gift. You can't buy it. It was only because of the Son of God who was able to do that willingly for you and for me because he thought that you and I were worth saving. He died. He was buried. But he rose again. And that's the promise that he has for you and for me. All of us who have been baptized, as it says in, in Romans, if we've been baptized, we're connected with our Lord's death. And if we're connected with his death, then we're also connected with his resurrection. But it's the waiting. I love that catch of commercial. It's making me wait. Come on, come on. You gotta have a full bottle of ketchup. You kind of like nonchalant in the restaurant, you know. Then you get a break. Oh, let me use my knife. 
I go in there, and it works. No copyright from that, okay? <laughs> but it's the waiting, the anticipation. And because of that, we kind of become kind of dull uh, in our lives. Just like the Thessalonians. They thought that the Lord was coming in their lifetime. And as we learned from our Bible study, no one bothered to write a history of the early church because why bother? The Lord's coming in our, in our lifetime. So why even bother writing anything about it? And so from Paul's letter, he says, you know, if you don't work, you don't eat. And for us, it's not that we stand idle, doing nothing, but Lord encourages you and I to use our lives wisely and usefully for his kingdom. Remember, he's the king. The king. <coughs> it seems to be uh, 1700s, we got rid of the king, right? We have a democracy here. Don't talk to me about a king, but we're talking about heavenly things. Jesus is the king. He rules and reigns forever and ever. Hallelujah, right? I'm also reminded of that musical, The King and I. You, Brenner? You, Brenner? <laughs> Deborah Carr, 1956. That relationship that they have with one another. And it, and it just reminds me of the relationship that you and I have with the king. The king who is approachable to us. Who we can pray to. That we can depend upon. That we read his word. There's a lot of fake news out there. But in God's word, it is true. And we can entirely depend upon that. Isn't it interesting that people try to predict when the Lord will come? Scripture says, don't know. But the one thing it says, there will be signs. Wars, rumors of wars, plagues, fires, flooding. The climate is changing. He compares that to when you see the leaves on a fig tree. It's a sign doesn't tell us exactly when the Lord will come, but we do know that he's here closer now. It's been over 2,000 years. But it's his time and our time. And while we see these signs, we're reminded that he will come again. There will be a judgment day. There will be the day of the Lord. Just like in Matthew, separating the sheep and the goats. When my, when my wife and I were in Israel, back in 1987, you see that the sheep and the goats usually are together. I was interested about that. And later on, it says that, you know, in Matthew, the sheep and the goats will be separated. We have that promise of heaven because we have a personal relationship or should have a personal relationship with God. Yes, there will be all kinds of calamities happening and we look at the emails that are going through Holy Trinity, people getting sick in and out. Um, it seems that you take care of one thing, there's always two or three things that follow. We know these things are going to happen. I always say to the Lord, can't I have the installment plan? Can't you separate them? Give me a break. But it doesn't always happen that way. 
And it's a challenge for our faith every day. And remember, in order to be a king, you have to have a kingdom. And we're part of that. We're his people. And every time that we pray the Lord's Prayer, thy will be done, thy kingdom come. So while we're here on earth, God uses us. You know, there's a lot of people out there who do not have a personal relationship with Jesus. Either they just ignore that there is a God, or they don't trust what they hear. And how can all these things happen if God is supposed to be the God of war? Well, it's our brokenness. All the way back to the garden. It's part of our sinful nature. Even nature is all corrupted. Nothing is, is static except God's word for you and me. So as we are sent out, literally, from the we never know who we will meet. And at just the right time, I always say that, at just the right time, God will bring another person to you. You'll have that encounter. And you will represent Christ, sharing what Christ means to you, what he has done for you, and what he can offer to that other person. And change by the grace of God. We just had Thanksgiving. Every day is Thanksgiving. And we thank Him for all the blessings that He gives to us. And this is the end of the church year. Next week begins Advent, a new church year. So we reflect on this past year, the grace that He has given to us. And also look forward to another year of grace. Not knowing exactly what will happen. We don't know what the future will bring, but we know who holds <coughs> the future. And so as we wait, we do our Lord's bidding with joy. When the Lord comes, at the right time, He will say, And the peace of God, which is above anything we could possibly know or understand, keep your hearts, your minds, in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior.